Good evening. Good afternoon. Good morning. Welcome to Full Course on Africa. Roundtable Africa with me, Edward Amara. Focus on Liberia, West Africa, and correspondent. Welcome to this all important program. We are we informed, we entertained, and we give you the latest development on the continent. As a unique platform, we are careful, quality, and magnificent information and release. We take this pleasure to welcome each and everybody across the globe, especially our ardent listeners, to be welcome to this forum and to always participate in most of our discussions. We know that Africa matters a lot. We all care. And we all want to see the progress of this continent. Uh, Africa as a continent have undeniably endured a lot of bitter experiences. Maybe that have as affected the peaceful union of the nation. Africa is of course important to all South Africans and to the world at large. But when we view development ongoing on the continent, they actually take us aback. We undeniably feel discouraged. We feel as if uh, maybe there is nothing much left on the continent and uh, Everything that normally emanates from the continent has got nothing good to do with development. Not that uh, we are the only problematic people on planet Earth, but it is because the, the people steering our fears lack that willingness, maybe to solve our problem permanently or uh, to find suitable solutions to it. And what is ironical is that the more we press for peace, the more we ourselves create problem towards the sustainability of that peace. We have psychophants, we have unscrupulous leaders, we have people with vindictive mentality, who cycle around this vicious cycle. Today, we are not living up to expectation as a continent, and we are backward as any third world nation. And if you check on the globe, most of the poor on our developed poverty striking countries may be politically volatile, states or nations or countries are actually found on the continent. And it is our leaders have turned the continents into a piece of land where beggars exist. They have now created a situation as if we are not knowledgeable to solve anything on the continent. Politically, we are dependent. Mentally, we are dependent. Then, there is nothing we can actually do. If you watch at the so-called independent, but people are claiming Africa is independent. You cannot be independent when you are economically dependent or economically dependent. You cannot be independent when you are not politically strong to make decisions on your own the so-called leaders that we are having today believe in vindictive ideology. Our continents have been depopulated. It has been negatively polar, polarized. 
then it is now radicalized, not on anything good. If we are speaking of radicalism, I'm not actually against being a radical. But I need positive radicals. Because if you do not have positive radicals, we don't have social readers making a positive renaissance against things. Even in Europe, if you read about the policies of renaissance, you will discover that most of those guys were actually social rebels. But he forgot about the mentality of thinking that everything is spiritual, everything is biblical, everything is supernatural. He started dealing with pragmatic theory. When Africa come with idealism and pragmatic or, or maybe theory of reality, it resulted into war. And we started to copy the mentality that exists into Europe, trying to apply. It is not actually applicable. We have different solutions. Maybe my character, my response, my reaction, my behavioral pattern to people will be based on how they treat me. Anyways, a lot, a lot, a lot is on about this continent. I normally see people telling me, I want to join the program. It's fantastic. I also want to have people discussing with, with me. But normally I come out to the program every day. So if you really want to join the program, maybe you can just post me on my social media page. Prior to the starting of the program, I can send you the headlines that uh, will be coming up. Then you can maybe do a careful explication around the, the headlines, come up with solid knowledge, then you and I can discuss it. To be prepared by the starting of the program, I can definitely send you an invite, then you will join it, together we can go ahead. Let's see the major headlines today. Highest number of bodies stuck up admin court case in Kenya, in New Salvation. Protests in Guinea see more than 10 people dead. Then, Sudanese fighting continues despite peace talk. Mali army foreign, foreign forces accused of killing 500 villagers. Then, EU commit $10 million to Liberia's elections. So, today, in essence, we have five major headlines we have liberia we are in west africa we have mali in west africa guinea in west africa sudan in the east then kenya and also east so let's see as i normally discuss not almost all issues are religiously related but because of poverty illiteracy ignorance and failure of our political leaders to live up to the social contract is signed with the general populace. People tend to anchor their, their faith into religion. The so-called cult institution that proclaims itself as the new salvation ministry, Good News International, maybe persuaded its members to stab themselves to death in the name of reaching to Christ early so that their problems can be solved. Most of them die out of suffocation, strangulation, and starvation. The autopsy report reveal. And some of the police findings, some of the police findings are actually revealing that some are having missing organs, which also could be a clear indication that this was a well orchestrated act in the name of organ trafficking or a well orchestrated, connected, and solidified organ trafficking network, which was so strong in the Kenya. So, if people are being killed out of suffocation, strangulation, and starvation, and now we are seeing organs meeting, missing into those people. I think uh, we need to be very careful. Maybe I'm trying to see how issues like that need to be handled. We also need our religious body to 
scrutinize most of the emanated judges because they create issues. That is why when they are coming, they come with things that people listen. It was just like when both Liberia and Sierra Leone rebel leaders started to, or came with war, they had, excuse me, their common market. <coughs> The common market was illiteracy, poverty, ignorance, and they met the people. So marketing their idea was so short, so common, and so quick. Everything happened. It happened at a goal. So with the current poverty status on the continent, Anybody, even the jihadist mentality that is spreading today on the continent, why do you think that is happening? It is because poverty is there, ignorant, illiteracy. People are dying when they know that it is their right to survive. Our so-called leaders are so unscrupulous. You have psychophants supporting them. There is no longer patriotism on the continent. I mean, most of our brothers who are in the diaspora, they believe in condemnation. There is no practical action. Most of them only approach us when there is time for election. Like when Liberia and Sierra Leone are about to undertake their election in Sierra Leone, it's in June. Liberia is in October. You see most of these guys coming on the continent seeking for political support. When they have never been there, they do not feel the pain of these people. Some of them are well-connected, well-associated, Affluently placed, but they cannot help the society. Help me not. But we should be here changing the countries or our country situation. Preaching peace, coming with practical solutions. Most Liberians and Sierra Leoneans have billions of dollars into their accounts, but they will never do any investment into those countries. All they believe in is steering political attentions. The Kaili media, they use the social media handles to disturb our nations. We who are living here feel the pain. They say, he, 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 if you wear your shoes, you know where it pinches. I have never seen where a large part has demolished a toilet. Those white noises are not helping us. Some of us, some of them are canopy of nuisance. And the billy they come around just because of few changes, maybe few uh, cheeky changes, they disturb our countries. Not everybody who is out there in Europe is actually helping Africa. Not everybody, not every American, Australian or Liberian staying in America or Australian staying in any European countries are actually helping our countries. But when it is time for election, you see these balloon-headed people coming on the continent to disturb the real political instability uh, stability that we have. Somebody who has lived his life in Europe and America for quite a long time, if I were a Liberian voting for a, an election position into Liberia or a Sierra Leonean voting of this country, any of, into any of this country, trust me, I will never vote for you. Because you have never lived into this way. You don't even uh, experience our, our, our pattern of behavior. You do not even know the pain that we are going through. They will come in. They are exploiters. We need people. People with well calibrated mentality who feel our pain. These are the situations that people are facing. Failure of political leadership and non leading people to recount or to rekindle their only survival into religion. And those religious leaders are also exploiting us. Where do we have to run? This is my major question. Where can we run? They said, maybe. The law or the judiciary should be the last hope of the common man. But if you cannot have the power, you will not seek justice. Now listen, a cult in Kenya, with term itself as Good News International Church, people are dying there out of starvation, out of strangulation, out of suffocation, and organs are missing into them. And these are churches that are related with the Western world. We are, their population is higher than ours greater in fact just seven good populated countries in europe could even be bigger than africa entire population they have a lot of faulty people over there and they are coming on the continent harvesting people organs 
look at like equipment who do came and took another Nigeria to go and harvest a kidney into the UK for his daughter. I'm sick. So that we just have to come with this news because it is our responsibility as a platform. But it's so bad. And coming to Guinea, more than 10 people killed in the protest against the orchestrated government, carefully planned government that overthrew Alpha Conde because of abuse of constitution, violation of human rights, he came into power. Everybody thought that. In fact, ironically, when he took over power, even the opposition led by Selun Dialo Dialo was clapping hand that it is not a coup d'etat, rather an enforcement of the constitution and mandate. But now people are saying it is violation of the constitution. And all of us knew. I remember I said Kelly and I was on this one on one of our programs. We are so blunt that the best military uh, civilian, the worst civilian government is the best military government. These guys, they know if I, it was like a carefully transfer of power from one bandit to another. Now he has taken over power. In fact, any demonstration in Guinea has definitely been declared as an attempted coup d'etat, and the military has the right to come against such institutions with full force. Civil society members have been detained, some of them have been killed, terror have been born, government properties have been set ablaze, and people have been detained, tortured, and raped. And now the idiot is there trying uh, this guy, how, how do they call him? Uh, Mama D, uh, uh, that is Kamara for people that he are killed when he's still violating. So I don't know. When you watch at these things, you can't see the connection with reality. He is trying Musa Dadi's Kamara for the 153 people that were killed in the stadium in Conakry. But his, his institution or the carefully orchestrated or planned government is killing people on a daily basis. And he has declared demonstration as, well as an attempted coup. Of course, peaceful society members that we apprehended have actually been released unconditionally. And people are still planning demonstration, the religious institution, civil society members, opposition leaders. But even the opposition in Guinea is not strong enough to take over power because they believe in tribalism. The opposition in Guinea is most of the opposition in Guinea, especially the, 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 the CPP party, the, led by uh, Selun Dialo, uh, uh, Sel, Sel, Dialo. A major what, political steerers or key actors are flooding. So people are afraid. That when they support this Fulanese party, when they come into power, they will only decide themselves or decide power among themselves. So people are afraid. So when you watch at this institution, I come to look at it. Guinea, population is higher than that of Liberia and Sierra Leone. Although Ivory Coast and Burkina Faso have larger population than Guinea itself, Ivory Coast beat maybe economically stable than Liberia and Sierra Leone. Guinea has a lot of natural resources reserved, but it has undergone a lot of strong dictatorial government autocrats. They prevented the expectation of that country's natural resources. But if war is to go into Guinea, both Liberia and Sierra Leone will suffer because Guinea is our major trade route. When situation goes bad, bad into Guinea, each time a situation goes bad into Guinea, it affects us in Sierra Leone, it affects us in Liberia. And some of us are both Liberians and Sierra Leoneans. So we cannot afford to, maybe, if you go into any of these countries, you will not survive because some like Guinea is destabilized. Africa is very close to us, but we do not speak the same language, except for those Pele Amanos and few other tribes. 
But we are talking about our international affiliation. Even with Guinea, of course, is the opposite because they are also French speaking. But our affiliation with them in terms of trade is very stronger than that of Africa. And Guinea is on the verge of becoming very problematic, unpredictable in terms of the political volatility. And civilians have been killed. The military is definitely not willing to hand over power. He has managed to ostracize some people out of power. And he is using that now to, to maybe invest himself into power. And with the power vested in him, he can do anything. He rules the country by decree. And he believes in ethnic city. He is closely affiliated with France. When he took he was closely affiliated with France when he took over power. After he came into power, he has disassociated himself with France. And his wife is the gendarmerie from France. Now he's making close contact with Russia, exploiting the country, censoring all every other thing over there. And he's, in fact, we shouldn't be, and maybe we can be disappointed, but it should, it should, we will be disappointed at the end of the day, but nothing should take us as a surprise if another coup d'etat takes place into Guinea. Or if the country disintegrates itself into war, ethnic violence, it's very high. So Guinea's situation is a very, 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 very volatile one. Too fragile. And each time a military takes over, the leader of that particular military is actually afraid. That is why they're involved in dubious activities. They feel insecure. They don't trust anybody. They invest into the military. Create small passion. Empower them with sophisticated and advanced training, sophisticated weapons and advanced training, who can easily come across. And it was the same thing that brought him to power when he was being brought in as what the head of the special forces. He used that to overthrow his boss. His boss is under detention. Let's be careful. Liberia, Sierra Leone, Africa are definitely on the rush. West Africa is definitely not safe. Let's come into East Africa. Sudan's fighting continues despite peace talk. People, the military under Dagalu and uh, Al Buham are saying that the continuous peace talk in Saudi Arabia and Southern Sudan are no yardstick for the war not to continue. And both military are saying they are going to ensure the disarms either. Nobody knows where that strength comes from. But Russia, America, Great Britain, China found themselves into these countries or into the country because of various reasons. Sabakia from South Sudan was likely expected to amicably handle the peace talk. But it has been sweated away. And Saudi Arabia is leading. But Saudi Arabia has also been accused of being a supporter of al -Buham. And if the government of the junta regime into Saudi Arabia is definitely leading that peace talk, it already had an established interest. And they will do everything to ensure that the situation become an exacerbated one. Fighting with escalate. In so doing, you will have the opportunity to exploit that country. Russia, Saudi Arabia, China are in a single folder. America, Great Britain, France are in a single folder, dividing the peaceful nation of, of Africa. Caus causing political destabilization that will enable these wicked countries to exploit that particular nation and rip it off of your natural benefits. The civilians, are going to suffer, especially women and children. People are being raped, tortured. In some areas, there is no electricity. In some areas, there is shortage of water. In some areas, there is no network. In some areas, people sleep out. And then those who can afford to even escape the country can do so. All other governments are now involved into evacuating their citizens out of the country. 
and Africa is being exposed. Africa is just turning to laughing stock. Some of us found ourselves on the continent are actually discouraged. We are taking a badge. We are taking a back. And we have been thrown into a perpetual chaotic situation. Our leaders are not willing to amicably handle our situation and they believe in chaotic atmosphere. They are violators of our constitution. We commit constitutional coup d'etat. The military is there, not helping us. The police are corrupt. Our educational system are bastardized on. Because nothing is definitely going on. Let me factual. This is the reality. This is the dangerous truth. It's so brutal. Nothing is going on. These guys, these guys, people should be very careful. And even those in the Western world, they sit down there. Some people in the Western world are sitting down there creating social media handles, destabilizing our countries. I've seen most of those scenarios on both social media, like on, uh, on Facebook, both for Liberia and Syria, including other, country, other African countries. They'll be calling for civil disobedience. They wish you find dialogue. We are disappointed. Absolutely disappointed. I, for one, am absolutely disappointed. Another are youth who think likewise as me are definitely disappointed. This renaissance that we are seeking for is not being done positively. We should. This is why, trust me, even our universities are relegated. Our teaching schools are relegated. Nothing is going on on this continent. Not that we are saying that we do not have the human capacity we do. Not, the, not that the resources are. Then the willingness, patriotism is being lacked. But is it lacking on the continent? You get into certain schools. I was in, in Liberia sometimes back. I knew what I saw. And I maybe see there back soon. Nothing. Nothing changes. The same problem. The same problem is what is continuing. You get into these schools. If I see some misdirected teachers teaching. Sad. You get into nursing field, you see some mid-directed nursing doing everything. Impersonation is at the other of the door. Everything of scrupulous comes on the continent. And we are even forced to, in fact, there are times you do business with your enemy to achieve your goals. Some people are very conscious doing business with these people who are depopulating, terrorizing, destabilizing, um, also creating chaotic atmosphere on the continent. They are very conscious, but they have no options. Because our government are failing us. And by nature, a human should survive. That's the simple part. No matter what do. Have we seen swans? When a swine or a pig give birth, if there is no food available, they will end up to eat those younger ones around. That is how Africa is baby. Not that we are not conscious, but we end up doing business with those that we think and feel and know that they are the one destroying our continent. But it's a means of survival. If you cannot do business, you can't. And our government are failing us. Now look at our population today. A lot of you today are druggists. That's what they call in Sierra Leone. Kus is also found in Liberia. In Sierra Leone, they used to have the called Pampas. It's also found. They used to take Tramadol. So people are not drugging themselves with the notion that the only solution to them is to be unconscious with their society. Because when you are conscious, you cannot find solutions. Some of us are going through those headaches. It's bad. We are being seriously disturbed. We are definitely not happy as youth on this continent. And when you voice it out, they will turn you as an enemy and they will come behind you heavily. And these so-called politicians want you to be sounding behind them like sacrifices. We have been approached on several occasions, maybe to join their political party mentality. Why don't go there? Definitely don't go there. Because you will definitely, maybe, in fact, you will start to do what you never hoped to do. And people will start to doubt your personality. It's okay. If we can die as teachers, then so be it. But it's really not easy. It's really not easy on the continent. Even while we are on TV or you are doing a live broadcast, they can come, take everything. It's on a, look at like what happened a few days back in Ghana when the journalists were assaulted in a local radio station in the northern Tamale region. 
just because that journalist was saying a local politician, a, a politician does not have right to involve into local chieftaincy election. When he critique, he was doing critiquing about the politician attitude. He, the police, the, the radio station was being invaded, and the local journalist threatened to be tortured. Have you seen this thing? Let come to Mali, in West Africa. Around 500 civilians have been killed, allegedly killed and raped by foreign forces, most probably the Russians and Malians, because villagers have been run over and killed. Sad. And it's not a surprise, but it's a disappointment. And the, the military government in Mali accused people by religion, uh, by, by region, because it is just natural. Like in, in Liberia, when war was there, the country was divided. You have the Kran, you have the Maningu, you have the Gius, you have the Manus fighting among themselves. So if you watch at the Maningu, they will accuse you maybe to be part of the Yulumu. You watch at the Kran, they will say you are part of uh, maybe Do. You watch at this Gil, they call it the Prince Johnson fashion. You watch at this Manu from Mimba, whatsoever thing. So it's the same thing that is going on into the Ivory Coast. People are being killed based on their region where those rebels or uh, tribal rebels found themselves, those jihadist movement, and they think that they are not supporting themselves. So they will kill you, they will rape you, do whatsoever thing. And the Russians are there. That is why they have expelled international media, maybe to cover up their secret. So sad. Absolutely sad. We are disappointed. So we are not, we are not actually handling the situation we are to handle. So it is absolutely a disappointment. We are not happy as Africans. Our continent has never survived. It has deteriorated from one stage to another. The leadership is fading up. And even the youth are not productive. Those of you who are sitting down out there in a the diaspora and think that Africa have a, a, a youthful population, we have the tendency of growing. That is zero percent. Zero percent. How many youth are educated? How many youth even have technical education? What is the tendency of us growing when the population is not useful? When our education system is backward, there is nothing good on the continent. You, you, you expect to develop human capital. Do you think, think that we should de depend on the Chinese to develop our continent? Any innovation or development that they make, when they leave those things become destroyed, there is nobody to repair them? It's nonsense. Practically nonsense. We depend on other continents to come. Look at the Asian tigers. You look at places like Malaysia, China, Hong Kong, and other. How do you think they develop? Self development is what we want. Practical education. In fact, most, in fact, even in time of education, we have three domains. You have the cognitive, you have the, the affective, and you have the sakomoto domain. Look at our academy. How many good sport academies are here? Each time we rush to go. I'm Chelsea fan, I'm Arsenal, I'm United, I am this, I am that. Even when our local sport here cannot develop, when you talk about local sport here, they politicize everything, they destroy our, our economy, they destroy the ambition of the youth. So we are all youth on this continent. Most of us are educated, but there is no work. Nothing. Nothing. And when people come, they think that Africa should develop. How can we develop? And you leave, you, you, even the youth can become educated, they can easily be radicalized because you cannot leave from school. In fact, most of us today, why do you think some of us are even discouraged to pursue education? Some youth, definitely. Because those who have soundly educated before your person have not found employment. And they will be as poor as you are. So what is the meaning of wasting millions of millions or dollars or, or liberty into college when you cannot find employment after your graduation? When you immediately get your, your certificate, your degree, turn to a mere beggar. To, to us in Sierra Leone, even including Liberia, teacher, I am a teacher. It, when they tell you about teaching, it's synonymous to poverty. So each time they say, if they say the my local teacher is a la poor guy, it associates you. Even in Sierra Leone, say anybody when I teach an a poor person. Listen, this, this, this is just natural fact. I mean, who go that teacher like Belega, this that this exactly. So even when you are in the field, you feel discouraged. You absolutely feel discouraged. There was a time I visited a cousin of mine in Liberia, in Foya. 
And I asked him, Mara, where are you? He said, Mama, I'm teaching AG school. I said, Mama, how many pay you over there? Hmm. You don't know, say, say Mama, only there managing life. Oh. But the people, they don't get one respect for all. He said, in fact, the only thing I'm doing, I don't want to, to, to be on that job until I can get that job to go over there. But I leave over the teaching, no people enjoy it. Nothing can come outside from the teaching. I felt so bad. I told him that hey, it's not deep. I said, I said, although he's staying like he's staying like bread, Mr. coming from Sierra Leone, but my mother coming from Liberia, but not easy like anything different. You live right going to Sierra Leone. I said, sometimes you're still on teaching there, nobody knows, even teacher or volunteer. So thank God you're here, you go into school early, know you. I said, sometimes one day go oh, God will make they take you on government payroll. He said, like, only but today say NGO can go in or I get that job. How do you expect our society to develop? Even the teaching sad. In fact, teachers. When they come, they, they are disgruntled. How do you expect me to come and teach when I'm not happy? This is why most of our schools, they end up giving extra lessons. We are definitely discouraged. We should actually steer our peers from one stage to another. Okay. Uh, Paul is saying, Derek Paul is saying, it all goes back to my point. We are unable to govern ourselves. Maybe that is one school of thought. He could be perfect because looking at our current situation, after 1950s coming toward this stage up to now, we have never been able to maybe change the philosophy of Africa, make a careful explication of what we have done, some of the mistakes that we have made, how we can change the philosophy, maybe set up you. If our teachers are, are teaching our children corruption into schools because the situation is forcing them to be corrupt and they will even start to Tell lies to. In fact, in Sierra Leone, I don't talk about Liberia because I have never taught into Liberia in my little age. But in Sierra Leone, a teacher will end up asking for practical. Even in English is practical. Everything is practical. And they will end up giving assignment. Each time you are submitting assignment, you submit it with money. Crazy thing. Because he's not being paid. He's not being paid. And I leave every money to go and come back. Nothing else. So who is, who is, who is doing these things? And yet we expect that Africa should change. Other countries have where they develop austerity. But even when they develop austerity, it's, it's our, at our own detriment. So when they sit down back over there critiquing us, know these things. We are not happy. Not that youth are idle. Not that this youth want to involve into drugs attitude. But there is no solution. Some of them do not even want to be conscious in the society. Because when they are in the yonder world, in the world beyond themselves, they have nothing to feel about. Derek Paul is saying, true development starts with the respect for the value of law, something we are unable to do, Edward. Absolutely, I do agree with you. We don't value the rule of law, and Africa does not value that rule of law. Leadership does not value, do not value that rule of law. And as long as leadership do not value the rule of law, nothing else is definitely going to develop. And today we found ourselves in dire need of everything. And we are looking in a forsaken community. Finally, EU commits ten million dollars to Liberia election. EU commit ten million dollars. George Via, congratulations. Congratulations to Liberians. Congratulations to the Independent Electoral Commission of Liberia. Congratulations to the opposition leader. Congratulations to civil society. Congratulations to everybody. But how you sue this money? Be? We all knew what happened into Nigeria. And even when the elections have not been conducted, accusations and counter-accusations have been made. And we have seen the unscrupulous nature of our politicians. We have seen how on numerous occasions, George Weah government has cracked down on media. And we have seen the like of Yeke Kaluba, who is not worth to be an MP or representative is leading the country, polluting the ears of our children. In fact, sometimes I wonder why should certain media cover Yeke Koluba's show? You have to have decency. You have to have law-abiding citizens. You have to have people who are rebels, but not those who preach profanity, hate speech. Not somebody who stand. You can do it in the world of parliament, but not outside parliament. And yet they start. Everybody is just becoming a lawless society. Volatility is so encouraged, and profanity is the order of the day. And we have students who are listening to them. When people become radical into, into schools, into colleges, on the street, they have they support those politicians. And you see even media rushing. People like that should be given blackout. People like that should be given blackout. They speak profanity. Pollute the media, pollute the kids. 
10 million dollars have been given to Liberia with another promise of further investment for the election to be free and fair and credible. International observers will be coming in October election. And George Weir is under serious scrutiny to ensure that the election is being conducted or elections are being conducted free and fair. And everybody I and looking at Liberia, it has almost everything that will create chaotic situation. There is poverty, there is illiteracy, there is ignorance, there is high level of failure on the side of government. Almost everybody is disgruntled with the system. They want to find solution. But cool. Without Liberia, trust me, it is very difficult for, for Liberia to actually succeed on their election, to even unseat George Weir if, if they cannot form a coalition. It will win the election. Nothing else. You will say I said it. If you cannot have a formidable coalition into Liberia, a formidable coalition, nobody will unseat George Weir. Maybe when they are thinking that he is a failure. Nobody. And his popularity is seriously maintained. Not because he's a good politician, but because he's established it before coming to... Nobody, everybody who is in Liberia knows the name George Oponweya. Almost everybody in the world who is a soccer fan, who listens to international media, who knows about Africa, sport, will tell you something about George Weir. How many of those politician people know them? Nothing. So... He has the influence. And he managed to exploit certain systems. He created a situation. All his wish, if you can have a grand, a grand coalition in Liberia, maybe he can unseat the like of George Weir. But you can't. And George Weir, if he can succeed to change the constitution from seven to five or six years, trust me, he will end up to run for another election. Because in their last stage of office, what they normally do, they change the, the, the constitution to their own suit. And they will come in to ensure that they succeed. Let's be very careful. Let's handle our situation the way it is. Ten million has been given to Liberia. Ten million dollars have been given to the government of Liberia through the country National Electoral Commission to conduct a free and fair election for international observers and other people to monitor the election and see a fruitful outcome. Liberia government has been admonished. And we are praying and hoping that we have a successful governance system in Liberia. Thank you very much. It's been me, Edward Amara, for Course on Africa, West African correspondent, coming to you with the latest update on the continent. Our major headlines, Highest number of bodies dug up in admin Kenya cult case. Then we have protests in Guinea, see more than 10 people dead. Sudan's fighting continues despite street talk. The Mali army foreign forces accused of killing over 500 villagers. And finally, EU commit 500, I mean 10,000 million dollars. I mean 10 million dollars, excuse me. You commit $10 million to Liberia elections in a notion that the elections are going to be conducted free and fair. Thank you very much. It's been me, Edward Amara, Focus on Liberia, West Africa and Correspondent. Thank you for dropping your comment. Join me back the same place, same time tomorrow.